Hello students, today we will discuss about the functional areas of parietal lobe. Now when you will see the outer surface of the cerebrum, you will see that this cerebrum is having the central sulcus. Now this area in front is known as frontal lobe and if you will have the imaginary line which is passing from the pre-occipital notch which is here to the parieto-occipital sulcus and if you will draw a horizontal line from the lateral sulcus this area is known as parietal lobe. Now in this parietal lobe you have the intraparietal sulcus there is a sulcus is known as intraparietal sulcus and this intraparietal sulcus is dividing this whole parietal lobe into the two part this upper part and the lower part the upper part is known as superior parietal lobule it is known as superior parietal lobule and this lower one is known as inferior parietal lobule so we will see that this parietal lobe is in the posterior part is having the superior parietal and inferior parietal lobule plus when you will see the area adjacent to the central sulcus now this area adjacent to the central sulcus is known as post central gyrus it is known as post central gyrus so when you will see the brain in the parietal lobe that is behind this central sulcus this area is having first post central gyrus superior parietal lobule and inferior parietal lobule now apart from that there are two more important gyrus one is known as supramarginal gyrus now this is the lateral sulcus and this lateral sulcus projects into the inferior parietal lobule and the area around this posterior part of the lateral sulcus this area is known as supra marginal gyrus supra marginal gyrus in the same way you have here the superior temporal sulcus that will also go and project into the temp uh, parietal lobe and this area around the superior parietal sulcus this area around the superior parietal sulcus is known as angular gyrus it is known as angular gyrus so if you will see the named areas named uh, sulci and gyri into this parietal lobe we will discuss first about the areas which are present into the central sulcus that means here that is the first then we will discuss the area present into the superior parietal lobule then into the inferior parietal lobule and we will discuss about these two area one is known as supramarginal gyrus and this is angular gyrus so what is supramarginal gyrus the part which is overlapping the posterior end of the posterior part of the lateral sulcus and the angular gyrus means the area which is present along the posterior part of this superior temporal gyrus sulcus clear so this is the superior temporal sulcus and the area which is occupying this posterior part is known as angular gyrus so these are the structures which you will see into the parietal lobe now what are the functional areas we are going to see here the functional the first and most important functional area is known as primary sensory cortex primary sensory cortex or it is also known as area s1 or it is also known as primary 
somatostatic area. Second is we will see the secondary sensory cortex. Second, we will see the secondary sensory cortex. And third is known as somesthetic association area. Somesthetic association area. Now, the sum books also include the sensory speech area. Sum book also include the sensory speech area in the list of the functional areas of parietal lobe. So in the functional areas of parietal lobe, you have the most constant three areas, primary sensory, secondary sensory cortex and somesthetic association area and some will have the sensory speech area which is also known as Wernicke's area. It is also known as Wernicke's sensory speech area. Now first we will see the primary sensory cortex. Now when you will see the primary sensory cortex, the first question is that what is the meaning of primary and what is the meaning of secondary cortex. Now when you will see the sensory areas, in that we are using the word primary and secondary. Now the primary cortex, the primary sensory cortex means the area which is receiving the chief or the main input which are coming from the thalamus. As we know that the thalamus is projecting to the cerebral cortex which are known as thalamocortical fibers and the area of brain which is receiving the chief or the main input. Plus this area is responsible for the determine or for the integration of those inputs which are sensory in nature. So what is the meaning of primary? The primary area is the area which is basically receiving all the chief input or the principal input or the main input which are coming from the thalamus and in that area we have the determination and integration of those chief sensations. Now what is the secondary area then? The secondary areas are the areas which lies outside the primary area. These lies outside the primary area and the secondary area receives input from the primary as well as from the thalamus. They may receive the fibers from the primary or from the thalamus or from the both. And these regions are smaller and the primary areas are bigger. Primary areas are bigger in size while the secondary areas are smaller in size. So that is what is the basic difference. And the second basic difference is that when you will have the lesion in the primary areas, the affection, that means the sensory loss is very much high. But if there is a lesion in the secondary areas, the affection may be there or if the impact is very less. So the secondary areas are receiving the fibers from the primary or from the thalamus and the primary areas which are the chief relay station for the principal fibers or the main input fibers to the sensory cortex. Now when you will see the primary sensory cortex, now this primary sensory cortex is also known as granular cortex. It is known as granular cortex. As we have seen that the premotor cortex, pre-central gyrus, that is the primary motor area is known as a granular cortex. This is known as granular cortex. Now why this is granular cortex? Because it is having the large amount of stellate cells. Because it is having the large amount of stellate cells and very less number of pyramidal cells. The pyramidal cells are very less in number while the stellate cells are most important cells which are seen into the primary sensory cortex. Second thing is that where you will find 
this primary sensory cortex so the primary sensory cortex occupy the gyrus just behind the central sulcus so this gyrus is known as post central gyrus this is known as post central gyrus and this is your central sulcus so this post central gyrus is occupying the primary sensory cortex and the broadman's area number 3 1 and 2 the area number 3 1 2 now this 3 is divided into the 3a and 3b it is divided into the 3a and 3b what is the meaning of this 3a 3b that if you will take the section transverse section of the sulci gyri now this is your central sulcus this is your pre central gyrus this is your post central gyrus now when you will see the area now this is the floor now this is the floor now this floor is occupied by the primary sensory cortex area number 3a 3a while the posterior wall of the central sulcus and in some part of the gyrus is occupied by the area 3b while the anterior wall of your central sulcus is occupied by the area broadman's area number 4 that is your motor cortex so when you will see the central sulcus the floor is occupying occupied by the area 3a and the anterior wall is occupied by the broadman area 4 which is motor cortex and the posterior wall is occupied by the sensory cortex area 3b so what where what is the 3a it is deeply buried into the floor this is the question which area buried in the floor of central sulcus the answer is 3a that is the sensory cortex and what area present in the posterior wall of the central sulcus 3b and which area present in the anterior wall of central sulcus motor cortex area number 4 so that is what is about this 3a 3b here the center part is occupied by the area broadman area number 1 and this posterior most is the 2 so when you will see here in the book or wherever you will have the sequence you will have the 3 1 2 broadman's area when we will see into this post central gyrus how we label 3 1 and 2 so that is what is about the position of the primary sensory cortex now what are the fibers and what are the functions of this area so the first and important thing is that this area receives the main input from the thalamus that is the thalamocortical fibers and these thalamocortical fibers are coming from the ventroposterolateral and ventroposteromedial nuclei of thalamus which are known as thalamocortical fibers now when the fibers will enter into this uh, primary sensory cortex they will stimulate the neurons particularly the neurons which are present into the layer 4 which are particularly present into the layer 4 and when you will have as you know that what is this layer 4 there are 6 layers there are 6 layer into the neocortex histologically so I am talking about that 4th layer in the histology and this these neurons of the layer 4 will stimulate the whole neocortex and your output will come out mainly from the layer 6 output will come out from the layer 6 and these fibers then will go into the primary motor cortex these fiber will go into the primary motor cortex where they influence the motor output where they influence the motor output 
that means here you will have the pre motor cortex and this is your primary motor cortex so your primary sensory cortex so the sensory cortex and the motor cortex are connected by these type of association fibers so the sensory cortex influence the primary motor cortex and that is what is about the influence of the sensation on the motor output apart from that what will happen that some of the fibers of cortico spinal and cortico nuclear fibers also take origin from this primary sensory cortex so primary sensory cortex will also give some of your cortico spinal and cortico nuclear fibers now these cortico nuclear and cortico spinal fibers will go and influence your posterior column your posterior column neurons of spinal cord posterior column neurons of spinal cord why because this posterior column is actually having the sensory neurons those will give rise to the sensory input to the brain so these fibers will go and influence these neurons and they will modulate the intensity of sensory input what they will do they modulate modulate sensory in input intensity so they will modulate the intensity of sensations in this posterior column of spinal cord so what are the important functions of the primary sensory cortex so the primary sensory cortex is a chief area where you will have the interpretation of your extraceptive and proprioceptions so extraceptive like pain touch temperature pressure and extraception like the position of your joint and your which comes from the muscle spindle now if you will see the area number 3a and 3b this 3a is mainly concerned with the joint position and 3b is concerned with the extraceptive fibers like pain touch and temperature now the fibers those are coming from the muscle spindles they mainly relay into this area 3a and the output will go to this from here to the primary motor cortex into the precentral gyrus and that will influence the motor output so what is the uh, role of this 3a 3b that they are also giving the projection to the motor cortex so that is what is about the primary sensory cortex okay so whenever you will have the primary sensory cortex you have to know about the area number that is 312 what is 3a what is 3b then you should know about the role of the primary sensory cortex that it is the chief site where you will have the interpretation and determination of the chief sensations which are coming from the thalamus so whenever there is a lesion now when you will see this primary sensory cortex in this sensory cortex we also have the representation of the body and that representation is just like the motor cortex which is upside down which is upside down and it is also known as sensory homunculus it is known as sensory homunculus and in this sensory homunculus we are having the sensations of the upper part of the body in the lower area and the lower part of the body into the upper area and that will go into the uh, posterior part of the paracentral lobule on the medial surface also so that is also having the sensations of defecation and micturition in the paracentral lobule posterior part in the medial surface so you will find that the representation of the body areas are here and that representation is depend upon the number of sensory receptors number of sensory receptors present in the body part so 
if you have more number of the sensory receptors the area occupying in the sensory cortex is also large if you have the less number of the sensory receptors the area representing into the sensory cortex is small so again you will have the homunculus where you will have the disproportionate size of the body parts and that is actually determined by the number of sensory receptors not by the size of the organ or the body part so this is what is about the homunculus sensory homunculus and if you will have the lesion in this area if you will have the lesion in the primary sensory cortex we have the loss of sensation in the contralateral side of the body we have the loss of the sensation in the contralateral except some crude touch and uh, crude uh, pain because the thalamus is also have the capacity to judge or to sense the crude touch and crude, crude pain but their uh, point to point identification or their two point discrimination is the function of primary sensory cortex so patient loss that fine touch but the crude touch he may uh, able to judge because of the presence of thalamus because of the thalamus so whenever you have the lesion into the primary sensory cortex it is always associated with the loss of sensation in opposite half of the body because of the crossing of the fibers so this is what is about the primary sensory cortex